When I was young, I'd always wanted a brother. I think that's something most children want. Not just a brother, but a sibling of any kind. Someone who lives a similar life to you, a friend who's always home, and someone you can learn and grow with. Isn't that such an exciting thing to have? Oh, I think it's marvelous, and a more youthful version of me would agree. I would spend my days in our seaside garden, playing with poisonous beetles and what have you, and I would just be thinking, you know what I need? A pal to help me rope down these beetles, because boy, they sure are strong. Though, if I screamed loud enough, Alice would always come to defeat the vegetable-eating fiend. Ah, Alice. I miss her. She was the closest thing I had to a mother growing up, you know. She was bright, smart, but mostly strong. Whew, that woman could pick up a boulder, I bet. I'd always looked up to her strength. Bodily strength has never really been something I was interested in. But that didn't mean I couldn't admire hers. She trained for hours to make sure she was ready for anything. Invaders, murderers, common robbers. You name it, and she could defeat it. I don't blame her, though. Father always had these private meetings with her, where he would give her lists of people to look out for in particular. Oh, I never let them speak completely alone. I would always be right outside the door, listening, even if they didn't know it. I was such a curious lad. I'm not sure why I was always in danger, but Father always worried about it. I suppose he didn't want to make me afraid, and that's why he'd always talk to Alice alone. It never bothers me, though. I knew he'd picked her because she was strong and could hold her own. Plus, she was great with children, so she was never a boring friend to me. I knew I was safe no matter what. Alice would protect me with her life, and I knew that she would always be okay, too. She really was my best friend. I miss father. I don't know where he is now, but I hope he's happy and finally at ease. He was so stressed the last few times I saw him. His lined face seemed to have aged so much in a month or so. He even told me, he said, Ernest, my boy, I may not see you for a long while. Be good for Alice and always keep your chin up. The world is such a beautiful place, and you have more friends than you will ever know. He was surely right, I'll tell you that. Look at all the fine people I'm with now. Oh, Miss Page is so much fun. I love her wings, but even more, her kitty is just the sweetest thing. I like cuddling with Ricks on the couch the most. I don't even mind when he decides to chew on my hand. Everyone always gets so freaked out by it. But I really don't understand. It's just a little swelling. Oh, and there's Miss Hattie. She's funny and quite the clever woman. She's a fantastic pilot, but when she's on break, she always comes to talk to me. I tell her stories of the sea and how nice it was to live by, and she always listens so closely, especially when I talk about Miss Alice. Now that I think about it, Huh, that's rather odd. Clint is also a nice bloke, but he doesn't talk much. He's always around Captain Alex, and that person? Phew, they're rather intimidating, aren't they? I'm sure I'll break through to them, though. If there's one thing I've learned in all my years of living, it's that people don't always handle things with the best attitude. I think Alex is one of those people. They probably have a lot going on. Besides, they're the captain of a bloody airship. That's got to be some serious stress. But my favorite person to spend time with on this ship is so very obvious. No, not Miss Page. Although I do spend an awful lot of time with her, and she has become like a sister to me. Well, no, she is my favorite person now that I think about it. But my second favorite person is my very own brother. Edgar is so dashing and charming. He's super brave too. You know, growing up, 
This is exactly what I thought my brother would be like if I had one. Well, minus the dragon wings. I thought he would have dragon wings, which is a letdown, I must say. But what can you do? He doesn't like talking to me much either, much like Captain Alex. But that's okay. I think it's just a bit of a doozy. You know, finding out you have a twin brother. Well, a clone brother. Oh, but that's not that bad. Same thing really, right? But I can't wait to get close with him. I know it'll be a really jolly time when you have two brothers together. You're bound to have a lot of fun. He's a bit gloomy, but I'm sure I can turn that frown upside down. And then maybe one day he'll let me talk about father, about all the time I shared with him. I wonder what kind of time Edgar and father shared on Flora. I bet it was an adventure. I can't wait till he tells me all about it. After all, he's my brother. We're going to be friends for as long as we live. Captains and Airships is brought to you by Blackmore Productions and written and produced by Ashley Glenn. This episode was voiced by Dylan Wickersham as Ernest Cadwell. Do you like listening to people with large estates and their clone problems? Become a Glipscriber today and find more podcasts and additional material at blackmoreproductions.com. You can also find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Be sure to also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Be sure to hug your clone sibling tonight, Angelic's Pilots. Blackmore Productions. Swim against the current.